Yeah, so I said we really want to attach a number to the amount of LD, and so what we can do is when we have that haplotype matrix, which we discussed in the previous module, we can take this vector of the number of uh, reference and alternate alleles that individuals have at one SNP, and then we can take it at another SNP, and we can essentially just correlate the two of these. So on your function, on your calculator, that's like that correlation function. Um, if you're a stats person, it's like the covariance divided by like the different standard deviations, different distributions, all those sorts of fun things. You don't really need to know how, what correlation means mathematically right now, other than this will give you a number um, and it will take whatever that correlation is and square it, and so it'll give us a number between zero and one. Zero meaning there's no linkage whatsoever, one being perfect linkage, and then it scales between there. So well, one thing you're gonna see all the time are images that look like this. And what this is, this blue line represents your genome, and all these white dots in it represent the different SNPs, and see, so these are the RSIDs for the different SNPs, so you can be like, okay, like right here, there, there, well there's actually three SNPs right here, there's two lines, but actually you have two SNPs that are super close, one a little close to it, and then this is scaled appropriately so that like, you can see how far these SNPs are away from each other visually. And then down here, these tell you the amount of linkage between any two SNPs. So like this first box refers to the first SNP and the second SNP, and you can see that it has a linkage score of 93. So these, if, so if I tell you the allele for this RSID SNP in an individual, you have a good shot of guessing what's at this SNP as well. And as you can see, uh, where's a good example? Like here's kind of a good example where this SNP is this one here, it's over there, and as we move down this, we're moving towards SNPs that are further and further away. And kind of in general, this linkage score is going down as you're moving further away from it. And that's because there's more opportunity for these recombination events to break up any linkage that's occurring. Um, so it's very hard to see on here, but there are these things called blocks, and they're linkage blocks, and there is this black line that goes like that, and another one that goes like that, and they kind of make these triangles that go down. And I'm sure there's actually a formal way for how we come up with these linkage blocks. I personally never use them, but the idea is that these SNPs or variants that we're looking at, if they're in a linkage block, they tend to be all highly linked to each other. So you can see like right here, there's a very small block of SNPs that are very linked to each other, but then they're not linked to any of these other SNPs because they have really low linkage scores over there. They're usually called um, topologically associating domains, or TADs, um, and the way that you find them is with a different type of data, okay. not, not just genotype data. Got it, got it. See, there we go, real biology people. Because it has to do with um, where the chromosomes are kept within the nucleus of cells. Okay. So just unrelated, but interesting. I'm really good to know. I'll, yeah. I'll store that in my back pocket for when I need to look smart. Um, Okay, yeah, so you'll see this a lot, and essentially all these scores are is the correlation between um, the, the SNP uh, values. All right, so finally, and we've kind of already talked about this a little bit, let's say you have a population and you survey and you only observe these two haplotypes. What happens over time to make it look like this? So if I survey this, say, thousand years ago, and I see that these are the only haplotypes that exist, but now I look, and these are all the haplotypes that exist at that same location. What occurs between this and this? It's recombination, right? Because a recombination event in here will swap those two together. And so, yeah, that's recombination. Apparently I animated these slides. Yeah, recombination <laughs> events there swap these together, or we'll make these haplotypes appear. All right, so let's say I have a same haplotype, but instead of being the short one, now there's like a million more nucleotides in here. If that were the case, is it gonna take more time or less time to get it looking like this? Less, and why is that? More or less to have a recombination of those. Exactly, the further variations are or variants are apart from each other, the more recombinations occur. So things 
go faster. And what this means is that the reason kind of, another reason we have kind of these LD blocks is because if you look at like this SNP, as you move away from it, things you expect to have less LD with it, simply because there's more opportunities for recombination events. So things on like the opposite ends of a chromosome, probably no linkage just because so many opportunities for recombination to occur. And uh, that's it for this module. So thank you very much.